All right. So again, uh, this is the last uh, last lesson of quadratic relations. We're bringing it all together here. So all the things that we looked at before uh, in terms of solving the multiple different ways we've been solving. Uh, and of course, max and mins, which means complete the square. And so when we're approaching these questions, uh, the two things uh, that we're going to look at first is we have to decide are we find a max or a min or are we solving? There's two different paths to go down with these word problems, all right? So that is the first thing to keep in mind. Now, I got two examples here, multi-parts though, all right? So example one, now I can't write this all out because it would fill up my whiteboard and that's the uh, killer with uh, word problems. Now, example number one here, it says the organizing committee of DuroFest uh, found that the profit, P, uh, from an ev the event depends on the ticket uh, on the ticket price. That's what it should say. The estimated profit is given by the equation P equals, so that's our profit, negative 37 T squared uh, plus, big numbers here, 1,258 T uh, minus 7,696. 7696. There we go. So that's a big equation here. All right. So uh, what we're looking at, oh, actually, it's not a 7, it's a 1, I believe. Nice little 1 there. So 1696. Or so uh, let me make sure I get that right. Uh, 1796. Oh, typo there. Let me get that straightened out. Got to have the, got to have the right equation here. Uh, 1796. There we go. Make sure I got that right. All right, now, who did this? Hold on one second. I got to make sure I get the right number here, folks. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it is 7,770. 7, All right, now, A says, what? is the profit uh, if the ticket price is $5, right? So we're looking at throwing an event here, or this place is looking at throwing an event, and we have to figure out what the profit is. Uh, well, this is a profit function. And it depends on the ticket price, right? So if you have a low ticket price, maybe you make, uh, there's a lot of ways to make a profit, right? If you have a low ticket price, maybe a bunch of people come, so you make a profit. Or maybe you just have like a little private event where you charge a huge amount and you're bringing a small amount of people. Or, you know, you could be somewhere in the middle of there. Now, again, like I said, when we're looking at quadratic word problems, the important thing is, is that, you have to decide, are we finding a max or a minimum value or are we solving? And there's, a, again, a lot of ways to solve. Now, with a max or a min, it doesn't always say in the question max or min. It might say the best, the greatest, the cheapest, uh, the most economical. There's a lot of different words that can indicate a max or a min. And so when I look at A here, what is the profit if the ticket price is $5? Well, I don't see any of those words, not the best, the greatest, the least, the min, the max. And so what I'm going to be doing here is solving. And so when I'm solving, I have a value, right? And that is uh, five is either going to be the P or the T. And I'm going to substitute that in and then somehow solve. And then again, there's a lot of different ways. Now, in this question, what is the, tick the profit if the ticket price is $5? That five, is that our P or is that our T? That's what I have to decide. Because I've already decided I'm not finding a max or a min. I am solving. So is that P, that five there, a P or a T? Somebody help me out. T. Right. So I throw the T down. All right. Now, again, I have my equation here. P is equal to negative 37. I'm just going to write this all down again. T squared plus 1258T. Uh, and again, I'm going to check this number because I got to make sure this number is right. Because uh, I have a, this is an old student's note. Yes, it is right. It's 7796. All right. 
So now again, when you're solving, you have to substitute in the known values and then solve for the other. We have the T, so I'm going to substitute in a five for T. So I have my profit is equal to negative 37. Uh, instead of T squared, I'm going to have a five squared. And then I have plus 12, uh, 1,258 times T, which again, the T is five minus 7,796. All right, and so now I solve using Bedmas. Now I'm lucky here, P is already by itself. So I can just do Bedmas and figure it out. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to do my exponent here. So I have negative 37, uh, five squared is 25. Uh, let's see, 1258 times five. What would I get for that? Uh, 6,000. 290 and then again i have this minus 7796 all right still just number crunching i can multiply these numbers here oops easy for me to do all right so uh negative 37 times 35 or 25 it's minus 925 plus 6290 minus 7796 all right, again, I already got P by itself. That's great. Don't want to do anything crazy here. I add all my numbers together and the profit. Am I getting a profit? Let's see here. Uh, I go to my calculator. Uh, not really. I'm getting minus $2,331. So a ticket price at $5, we're actually going to lose money if we throw this event. Uh, in fact, we'll lose $2,000. $331 if we charge only five bucks for this event. All right, so now I get to B, where we actually want to turn a profit. So we know we can't uh, turn a profit with five bucks. All right, now B says, uh, what should the ticket price be if we want to now, we want to look at having a profit of $1,000. All right, so there's our profit. We don't want to lose money, right? So we're going to figure out the ticket price then. But again, when you're solving any equation, you got to know them all but one. We know what our profit is targeting now. We're targeting $1,000. And so wherever there's a P here in this equation, now I'm going to put in 1,000 for it. And so I only have one P, and so therefore, I've got 1,000 is equal to that negative 37 T squared plus 1,258 T minus 7,796. All right, and again, now this is a quadratic equation. I want to solve it, and it's in standard form, which means i got to have a zero on one side of the equation. So I'm going to move that 1,000 over to the other side. All right, so there's my zero on the one side of my equation. I've got to have minus 37t squared plus 1258t, so I'm just rewriting that. Now, I'm going to skip a step here because I'm going to need the room on my whiteboard. If I'm moving a thousand over, it's going to become minus a thousand, right? So cross that out. So instead of minus seven thousand seven hundred ninety-six, I'm going to have minus eight thousand seven hundred and ninety-six. All right. Now, a couple of ways I can solve this. I can try factoring, or I can try my quadratic formula. Look at the size of the numbers. Maybe I could factor. Maybe I couldn't. But the numbers are huge. So I could be all day trying to factor this, even me as a math teacher, if I didn't know the answer. And I don't, because I'm not looking. So I'm going to go with the quadratic formula. And again, the A value is always in front of T, the, uh, the squared term. In this case, it's T squared instead of X squared. Our B is always the number in front of the T or the X. And our C is always the number. All right, so again, I'm going to use my quadratic formula, which, again, you have to know x equals a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
All right, so here we go. Instead of x, we're going to have a t equals. Uh, then a negative b. So b is plus, so it is actually going to be negative when I put in the formula here. So negative 1258 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Ooh, that number squared. So I'm going to take 1258, square it, minus 4, times a, which is my minus 37, times my c, which is that big number, minus 8,796. And of course, all over 2a, so 2 times minus 37. All right, so we got some big, big numbers going on here. All right, so let me see if I can simplify this somewhat. All right, so I got t equals minus 1258 plus or minus, let's go big here, 1,258 squared. Well, I typed that into my calculator and I'm getting, ooh, a bunch of digits here. So I got one, five, eight, make sure I don't miss any, 2,564. All right. Now, again, this is something I mentioned. Uh, underneath the square root sign of the quadratic formula, a lot of people struggle with the sign. Not getting the numbers, just the sign. And obviously, if you don't get the sign right, it makes everything look really off. So I got a negative times a negative. That's positive. Uh, times another negative. So it's going to be minus. All right, so I got 4 times 37 times that big number there. And I'm getting, whoa, uh, 1, 2, 8, 7. Uh, let's see here, zero, zero, 008. All over 2a, 2 times a negative 37 is a negative 74. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to subtract those two underneath the, bra underneath the square root sign. All right, so I'm going to have to go up here. Why don't I switch colors, kind of. Make it a little bit easier to look at. So let's see here. T is equal to negative 1258 plus or minus. All right. So what's underneath there? So I know in the bottom here, I'm going to have minus 74. All right. So I take those two numbers, I subtract them, and I'm getting another big number. Two, nine, five, three fives and a six. There we go. So 295,556, all right? Then I'm going to take the square root of that. So again, I'm going to have t equals negative 1258 plus or minus. Uh, that number is 543.65 divided by negative 74. All right, so now you have to, again, come up with my two answers. So the first answer, I'm going to take negative 1258 plus 543.65. And again, the last thing I'm going to divide by is negative 74. And so when I do that, I actually get, uh, let's see here, uh, 900, or sorry, $9.65. And all right. now I take minus 1258 subtract 543.65, which is going to be a negative number, divided by negative 74, and I get $24.35. And those are the two values that will give us a profit of $1,000. So something that companies have to think about when they are having an event is, are we going to make money on volume? Because if I have a small ticket price of $9.65, we're going to have a lot of people. We're still going to make $1,000, but we're going to have a lot of people. Or are we going to make it on what's called margin? Are we going to make a lot of money on this event or $1,000 on this event? Because we're making $1,000 either way. By charging, not having as many people, but charging them a lot. So those are the two options. So there are two ticket prices for this event that will give us a $1,000 profit. All right, now, part C. Whoa, don't want to erase the equation there. All right, now, 
Next up, we get to should rewrite the equation here. P equals negative 37, I believe it was. All right, so the next uh, C is what is the most money that you can make? What's, what's the biggest profit you can have from the event? All right, so that's uh, what is the most money that can be made and what should the ticket price be? So that's a nice way of saying what is the maximum profit you can make and what should your ticket price be to make that maximum profit, right? We already looked at if you charge $5 in A, $5 for a ticket price, you'll lose money. We just went through what we could charge to make $1,000. Now we want to know what's the most we can make. So this is where we are completing the square, which means I have to turn this formula into vertex form, right? All right, so by completing the square, we can get it. Now again, I have a minus 37 in front of my squared term. And so what that means is I'm gonna to have to factor out a minus 37 first. All right, so I got P is equal to minus 37. And again, when I'm factoring out a minus 37, that means I'm dividing every single term by minus 37. All right, so negative 37 T squared divided by negative 37, well, that's just gonna be T squared. All right, now I take positive 1,258 divided by T. Let's see, it's gonna be a positive divided by negative, it's gonna give me a negative. And I get, uh, let's see here, minus 34 T. I take minus 7,796 and divide it by negative 37. Grab my calculator here and I get uh, plus 208. I have even a decimal, that's all right. All right, so now that I have taken the negative 37 out, I'm going to now complete the square inside those square brackets. All right, so in round brackets, I'm going to put my t squared minus 34t. All right, again, 208 is not going to be my magic number. So I'm going to throw that over here on the side, plus 208. All right, so again, completing the square. How do I get my magic number that I need? I take that uh, number in front of the t, or x, but this time it's t, minus 34. I cut it in half, which would be uh, minus 17. And then I square it. So minus 17 times minus 17, or time, yeah, is going to be a positive, and it's going to be a positive 289. Again, to balance it out, I'm going to put a minus 289 there. All right, so now I can rewrite this. Minus P equals minus 37. All right, in brackets, that's where we have our binomial squared. That's why we complete the square, because we have this pattern. Uh, and this time our variable is a t, so it's going to go there. And again, the number that goes there is half of the number that's in front of your t, so half a negative 34 is a minus 17. Uh, then I have my leftovers numbers there. I take minus 289 plus 208. It's going to be negative. Uh, and we'll actually end up with uh, a minus 81. All right, now we've completed the square. Now I'm going to put the minus 37 back. Again, I, to take the minus 37 out, I divided everything by minus 37. When I put it back, I'm going to multiply it, everything by not minus 37. And so I get minus 37 times this whole thing. Well, that's minus 37 times this binomial square here. And then I get minus 37 times negative 81. So minus times an I, minus is going to be a positive. And those are two big numbers. And so if I multiply those two, I get uh, 2,997. All right, so now I've completed the square. But this, again, this is a word problem. Got to come up to, with a conclusion here. And all the answers are there. You just have to know where they are. And so I can complete this sentence is that the max profit is blank when the ticket price 
is blank. And again, the, the answers are there. You just got to be able to find them. And first of all, I do know that it is a max profit because my A value here is negative, which means our parabola opens down, which means the vertex is at the top. All right, now, what is the profit? Again, here's our P right here. It means our profit is on the outside. So the max profit is $2,997. All right, and again, the ticket price is inside the brackets here. And it looks like our number here, again, there's supposed to be a negative sign in this equation. We've talked about that many, many times. And the ticket price should be 17 bucks. And that will give you the maximum profit. All right, so when we're looking for a max or min, you gotta complete the square. When we solve, we go the other way. All right, I don't think there's a part D to that one, that bad boy. All right, so we're on to uh, example two here. All right, so we'll get rid of this stuff. All right, so example two. It's a totally different scenario now. Moving on from Durofest. All right, so this one says, and they do this stuff here. That's where I got the idea. As a university study has shown, on average, uh, the percent of material memorized uh, by grade 11s after T hours of studying is given by the formula P equals percentage. That's your percentage or what you can remember. Uh, is equal to negative t, the negative 8t squared, uh, plus 48t, uh, plus 18. All right. So there's our percentage. And we can look at uh, A here. Again, there's our percentage of what you can memorize. T is how long it takes. So as my old uh, roommate used to say is, he thought his memory was like a glass, where if you poured a certain amount of water in it and you got to the very top, he could remember that much. But as soon as you started pouring more water in, water came out the side. He forgot stuff. So that's kind of the idea of this question here. All right. And so we get to A. What is the greatest percent of material memorized and how long does it take? So how it says the greatest, the greatest percent of material. Here's where we're looking for a max or min again. And so we're going to look at um, completing the square. All right, so again, uh, I'm going to have to, this time, factor out a negative eight, right? Because uh, that's in front of our T squared term to complete the square. So again, there's my T squared. I uh, take uh, 48 T and divided by negative eight. Uh, positive divided by negative is gonna be a negative. And I believe it's uh, six, negative six T. Uh, then I take 18 and divide by negative eight. Uh, that's gonna be a decimal. Let's see here, do my decimal. I get uh, negative 2.5, negative 2.25. Okay, so now it's time to complete the square. All right, so in round brackets, I got my T squared minus my six T. Uh, need my magic number. All right, so once again, completing the square, if I want my magic number, again, I'm looking at the number in front of T. Uh, it's negative six. I cut that in half and square it. So half and negative six is uh, negative three. Negative three squared, negative three times negative three, positive nine. Now we have a minus sign over there to balance it out. All right, so uh, let's see here. P equals, I keep working through. Now that I've got my magic number there, I can rewrite that part as a binomial square. All right, and so again, there's my T in front, in the, or at the start there. Uh, the number that goes in there, again, is half of the number in front of your T term, or X term usually. And so uh, half a negative six is a minus three. All right, and then again, I have my information over there. My leftover numbers, minus 9, minus 2.25, that's a minus 11.25. All right, so then the square has been completed. 
which means uh, I'm going to put the negative 8 back. So let's see here. Negative 8 times that whole thing is negative 8 times that whole thing. And then negative 8 times a negative 11.25. Negative times a negative is going to give me a positive number. And uh, that number would be a positive 90. All right, so again, I've completed the square, and I can answer this word problem now uh, just uh, by looking at it. Again, if you know what you're looking at. So uh, the most material that can be memorized is blank if you study for blank hours. All right, so again, the answers are there. You just have to know where to find them, right? And so uh, the most, again, is it the most? Yeah, it is. Look at the A value. It's negative again, so our parabola is opening down. It means the vertex is at the top. Uh, what's the most that can be memorized? Again, P this time is not profit, it's percentage. It's on the outside, and there's our positive 90. So the most that you can memorize is 90%. All right, and how long would it take in this particular study? Time is on the inside there. Again, there's supposed to be a negative sign there, that so it means it's a positive three hours. And there we go. A little uh, trivia for you. On average, do you know how many numbers uh, a human can uh, maximum can memorize? On average, not everybody, just on average. Anybody know the answer to that? Crickets, eh? No one knows. Do you want to take a guess? How many numbers somebody can memorize on average the most? What's like the range? What, what's that, sorry? What's like the range? Like... The number, like, is it in the thousands? Like, oh, I mean, the range could be anything. I mean, people in my family can't remember anything, and then, you know, other people are really good at memorizing stuff. My memory sucks, but uh, but the average person, if you were to say, if you just started giving them numbers, hey, here's a number. You know, uh, you got two and twelve. Can you memorize those? Yeah, it's two and twelve. The most, uh, the average number, amount of numbers that somebody can memorize is seven. Seven. Guess how many digits are in your phone number? Seven. That's the whole point, right? So that's why your phone number is seven digits, because that's what, uh, that's the amount that people can remember. Not counting the area code. You guys are young, but you never used to have to put in your area code back in the day. Now you do. But the area code is the same for everyone, pretty much, right? You're either 705 or 905. All right. Uh, last one, B. Still same, same scenario here. Still all about the study. All right, so there we go, we're back in. Now, we have a student, let's see here, uh, who just wants to memorize, uh, how long would you have to study just to memorize 50%. You just want to memorize half of it, right? So here's what we're looking at this time. Is that our P, the percent, is 50. We just want to pass, I guess. Get half of it. All right? So, again, because uh, I'm not asking for least, greatest, all that kind of stuff, we're solving. And so I'm going to put that 50 in. Where there's a P here, so I got uh, now I got 50 is equal to uh, negative 8t squared uh, plus 48t plus 18. But again, uh, to solve either for factoring or for uh, the quadratic formula, you got to have a zero on one side, all right? So I'm going to move that 50 over to the other side. And so I have a zero equals negative 8t squared plus 48t. Uh, plus 18, uh, but now I got a last 50 there because the 50 changed sides. So it changes sign. 
All right. Uh, so uh, before I do anything, again, I got to get it in standard form, which is almost in, except for I got to put my C's together there. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, positive 18 minus 50. I believe that's a minus 32. All right. So I could try to factor this. Uh, but since today we did the quadratic formula, I'm going to go with that. So again, my A value is in front of the T squared. My B value is the number in front of T, and there's my C, the number afterwards. All right. So again, I'm going to solve using the quadratic formula. So I have T equals uh, negative B. Uh, B is positive, so I'm going to switch the sign. It's going to be minus 48 plus or minus B squared, which is a 48 squared, minus 4A. A is negative 8 uh, times C, which is a minus 32. And, of course, all over... 2a, so 2 times a negative 8. All right, so again, I want to simplify this. I get t equals minus 48 plus or minus, let's see here, 48 squared. Uh, i got to get the calculator for that one. Uh, 48 squared, I'm getting uh, 2,304. All right, again, Figuring out the signs before I figure out the number here. Again, it's one of the things I always find is this uh, people struggle with. So I get a minus times a minus. That'll give me a plus. Uh, times a minus again will give me a minus. All right. So it's going to be a minus sign there. Uh, 4 times 8 is uh, is 32 times another 32. Uh, let's see here. That's a calculator job here. Uh, I'm getting 1,064. All right. And let's see here. 2 times uh, negative 8 is minus 16. All right, so again, going back up here, simplifying things, I will switch up the colors. Let's see here, so let's go with uh, this one here. So I get T equals uh, minus 48, plus or minus, what do we got brackets here? Uh, oh boy, 1,200, I uh, better grab the calculator, I won't mess it up. So close to the end here. Let's see, see here. We got uh, 1280. So divided by minus 16. All right. So once again, keep simplifying. It's getting smaller. That's a good thing. Take the square root of 1280 here. So you minus 48 plus or minus what number we got now here? Uh, 35.78. divided by negative 16. All right, so again, the last step is divide by negative 16. So I'm gonna give my two answers here. I take uh, the first one, I can take negative 48 plus 35.78. Uh, so we're gonna get like 13 something or 12 something, then divide it by negative 16, and I get to point seven six hours. All right, or T equals, Let's see here. So I take uh, my negative 48 minus 35.78 and then divide by negative 16. So again, I'm going to get an answer here. And I get uh, 5.24 hours. So in this study, what it's saying is if you want to memorize half the material, you got two options. You can take, uh, well, almost three quarters of an hour, 45 minutes roughly, or you can take five and a quarter hours or 5.24 hours. So maybe in this study, what happens to people is you can memorize 50% uh, up until about three quarters an hour. You keep memorizing up until about, three, I think it was three hours we got our maximum. And then maybe your brain just stops memorizing stuff because again, you start forgetting stuff. Again, these are studies they do. Uh, and sometimes the results uh, are surprising. But in this case, if you want to memorize 50% of the material, given this study of what the material they're saying, you got two options. If it was me, obviously, I'd take the point uh, seven, six hours. You're going to save yourself quite a bit of time. All right. But again, uh, when you're solving word problems, you've got two different roads to go down. You're either solving or you're finding a max or a min. That's the first decision you got to make. So if you're finding the max or min, 
you're completing the square. It's the same process every time. If you're solving, you got options. You got factoring or you have uh, the quadratic formula. I thought I'd focus on the quadratic formula today because that's what we did earlier this morning. All right, so now what we're looking at, just gonna hit a little pause or stop button here. 